Welcome back to Ben Rants, and when I was a kid, internet trolls were an endangered species. Well, I ranted on Adventure Time, but there is another cartoon show that I need to rant about for the fourth time. Again, I felt like I didn't give this show a proper chance, so I killed more brain cells by watching a ton of episodes of this show. Did it change my opinion on it? No. Did it give me good reasons to hate this show more? Yes. Well, sit back and pr be prepared to be psyched out. Here is my rant on Regular Show. Let's start from the beginning. Regular Show is about a blue jay named Mordecai and a raccoon named Rigby, and they are slackers that work at a park. They mostly mind their own business, but then random things happen out of nowhere and are never mentioned again. This show's episodes are nothing but big pink elephant moments. Their friends include their angry boss named Benson, who's a walking and talking gumball machine. You know, I wish when I get a job that my boss was a gumball machine. That would be great. Hey, Mr. Licious, I finished all those duties you told me to do. What's next? There you go, not talking again. What's wrong with you? Hey, Mr. Licious, if you want me to go home and watch cartoons for the rest of the day, don't say any- GET BACK TO WORK! Okay. More of the characters include Pops, a talking lollipop that has the brain of a five-year-old, Skiffs, a yeti who wears pants and is voiced by the great Mark Hamill, and is possibly the only good character in this show, Muscle Man, a fat guy who sure loves making fun of his mom, and High Five Ghost. A ghost with a hand on his head. Yeah, so this show's formula mostly consists of surrealism. Well, better prepare my brain again for weird stuff. Now, let's take a look at all the episodes I watched. If my computer mouse would stop swearing at me. One episode I watched was caffeinated concert tickets. Mordecai and Rigby see an advertisement for their favorite band, Fist Pump, and they decide to work hard to get tickets to the concert. And they say heavy metal music doesn't have a positive influence on our youth. Anyway, Mordecai and Rigby work overtime to try to get money. However, they start to get tired and need some energy to do it all. So, they start drinking coffee and keep working hard. While they go through a montage that plays Lover Boys, Everybody's Working for the Weekend in the background, the boys get the tickets and they soon wake up from a caffeine hangover to find a random Asian guy and a giant coffee bean who steal their tickets. Not questioning what just happened, Mordecai and Rigby chase after the two until they make it to the fist pump concert. They ask for their tickets back and the Asian guy and coffee bean give them back. Well, that was easy. Ha ha, I have your tickets. Give them back. Okay. Anyway. They get into the concert, and they fall asleep before it starts. It's a good thing I don't care about these characters, otherwise I would feel sorry for them. Well, this episode was pretty bad. The plot was cliched, working hard to get concert tickets. The weirdness of this episode was pretty low. An Asian guy and a coffee bean? Is that all? And I didn't laugh once. This show is supposed to be funny, right? Not to mention how wrong it was that Margaret, Mordecai's love interest, has a human boyfriend. Anyway, let's keep moving because I want to be done talking about this show. The next episode I watched was Free Cake. In this one, the boys have a sweet tooth and they want cake. However, they don't have any money to buy it themselves, so they want to get a free cake. One could simply ask why they can't just make their own cake. But they are poor and lazy, so that answers that question. Anyway, the two try several ways to get free cake. Throughout the episode, the boys say this annoying chant, Free cake, free cake, or no cake, no cake. Hmm, is red earwax bad? Anyway, the boys find out that Skips has a birthday coming up and they want to throw a surprise party for him. However, they can't have a surprise party for Skips without Skips. They eventually find Skips in the woods doing a ritual, and they stop him. 
This causes a limo to fall out of the sky and take Skips to space where there are floating guardian babies that are mad at Skips for not completing the ritual. The babies try to kill Skips, but Mordecai and Rigby save Skips by giving the babies the chocolate cake. The babies send the boys back to Earth and they throw the party for Skips. Seeing as how their free cake was destroyed, Bench then had a spare and they get their cake. I hope it was worth it, boys. Well, this episode was bad too. Mordecai and Rigby came off looking like selfish jerks who just wanted to throw a party for their friend just to get free cake. And the weirdness still didn't impress me. Flying guardian babies? That's it? Guardian babies that breathe fire and play ukuleles. Come on! Put more effort into this! Next up was Peeps. This one starts off with Mordecai and Rigby having a staring contest. You know what's more entertaining than watching people have fun? ACTUALLY HAVING FUN! Anyway, Benson is sick of the boys always slacking, so he sets up ca a camera system called Peeps to watch them. Each time they slack off more, he orders the next level of the Peeps system. Of course, Mordecai and Rigby being their dumb selves having the easiest job in the world and not doing it, lead to Benson ordering the final level of Peeps, which is a giant floating eyeball. The boys are creeped out by this, so Mordecai challenges the eyeball to a staring contest. As they do this, the eyeball tries to cheat, so Rigby cheats to help Mordecai win. Yeah, it's only bad to cheat when you're not the one doing it. So, the eyeball loses and Mordecai's eyes won't shut because he held them open for so long. Again, this episode was boring. Nothing really impressed me. A staring contest with a giant eyeball? That was the big climax? I'd rather watch Jackie Chan paint Easter eggs. Next up was Dizzy. In this one, Pops is nervous because he has to give a speech in front of a large group of people. Hey, I just realized something. Why the heck are there humans in this cartoon while there are weird things walking around as if it's normal? I could understand if the weird things had their own world, but then why are there humans? Oh yeah, I forgot. It's surreal. Anyway, Mordecai and Rigby tell Pops that if he spins around, then he won't get stage fright. However, he spins until he passes out and falls into a dizzy world. In this, he sees a realistic blue jay and raccoon. Mordecai and Rigby go in after him and say Pops. To solve his stage fright problem, they draw his face on the back of his head so he doesn't have to face the audience while he talks. Yet again, this was a bad episode. It was boring. For crying out loud, I want weird stuff and the weird stuff this show is throwing at me isn't impressing me at all. My gosh, the makers of this show can't even put effort into not putting effort into this show. My mom came next. Mordecai and Rigby fail at delivering a lemon tree, and so they have to be supervised by Muscle Man and High Five Ghost. We then get to know more of Muscle Man's personality, which just consists of him making fun of his own mom. Oh, come on! Give your character some personalities! I don't care if they're cliched personalities, just give them something! And plus, am I supposed to find that funny? Mom jokes? Yeah, mom jokes aren't funny either, folks. They're just distasteful and stupid. You know who's also distasteful and stupid? My mom! You see? Nothing. And, to quote Mr. T, Don't insult your mom. She's not here. If it wasn't for her, you wouldn't be here. Thanks, Mr. T. Anyway, Muscle Man and High Five Ghost look after Mordecai and Rigby, and they actually have fun, which leads into a montage where Poison's Nothing But A Good Time plays over it. I'll thank this show for once. Thank you, regular show, for giving me a break from the stupid mom jokes and playing good music. Anyway, Mordecai and Rigby get tired of hearing Muscle Man's mom jokes, and they start to insult his mom. Of course, this ticks off Muscle Man. Okay, so you can make fun of your mom, but others can't? Seems legit. Anyway, 
Muscle Man's brother is apparently a demon, as he drives a semi-truck from out of the depths of hell, and they teach Mordecai and Rigby a lesson. Well, unlike the others, I actually liked this episode. No, I'm yanking your leg. I hated this one, too. The climax was once again underwhelming. A truck driver from hell? Come on, I know five-year-olds with better imaginations than this. And I got really tired of Muscle Man's bomb jokes. You know who's also tired of mom jokes and could be watching a better show? Me. The next episode was High Score. I love the effort they put into the names of these episodes. Anyway, Mordecai and Rigby aren't respected for playing video games, so they play an arcade game and try to beat the high score. They eventually beat it, and a giant floating head that set the high score comes from out of the sky. He grows arms and legs, and he tries to protect his title. Mordecai and Rigby pretend to throw the game, but they start playing again, and they beat the head's high score. The head proceeds to explode. Wow, gaining up on one person like gang members. Mordecai and Rigby are such lovable characters. Big surprise, I hated this episode too. Mordecai and Rigby once again came off looking like cheating jerks, and I was getting really bored while watching this episode. You know what's more fun than watching a raccoon and a blue jay playing video games? ACTUALLY PLAYING VIDEO GAMES! The next episode was Meet Your Maker. In this one, the gang is having a barbecue. Mordecai and Rigby, being their dumb selves, accidentally drop hot dogs in a creek. You know, there's one major plot hole of this show. If Mordecai and Rigby keep screwing things up, why doesn't Benson just fire them? Oh yeah, that's right. Then the Amers won't have an excuse for Mordecai and Rigby to make people's lives miserable. Anyway, the boys had to go to the meat locker to get more hot dogs. Of course, they locked themselves in. This ticks off Mordecai, who's tired of Rigby always being an idiot. You're no Thomas Edison either, Doc. Anyway, Rigby finds talking hot dogs, and they manage to get out of the meat locker. The hot dogs then attack their friends, and they are able to stop them. Mordecai and Rigby then put all the blame on Benson, and he gets scolded for the hot dog attack. Our heroes, ladies and gentlemen! Once again, this episode was really underwhelming. Talking hot dogs? I mean, seriously. A psychedelic rock band, when they're at their worst, could come up with more trippy ideas than this. Plus, it keeps proving that Mordecai and Rigby are morons that can't take the blame for the mistakes they make. Next was prank callers. In this one, Mordecai and Rigby are making prank calls. And of course, all their jokes end with Joe Mama. Mr. T then comes out of a wall and beats the two up with his golden brass knuckles while saying, I pity the fool who thinks he's funny while insulting his mother. Oh, there goes my overactive imagination again. Instead, the boys keep calling until Bidson orders them to stop using the park's phone. Now, they have to use 80s cell phones. Ooh, retro technology in a cartoon. You know what's better than actually seeing retro technology in a cartoon? Joe Mama, dang it! I mean, actually having the freaking tech right in the palm of your hands! Seriously, just because you have something retro in a cartoon doesn't automatically make it good. It just doesn't. That would be like if The Dark Knight would have turned into a good movie if Heath Ledger's character chews on a candy cigarette. It just doesn't work like that. Anyway, Mordecai and Rigby prank call the master prank caller, and he sends the boys back to 1982. It then turns out the master prank caller is a giant 80 cell phone, and he starts to prank Mordecai and Rigby, and turn them into 80s animals. However, they manage to prank the master prank caller, and they decide to team up with the thing that was trying to kill them earlier to make prank calls. Big surprise, I also hated this episode. Time travel on a giant 80s cell phone? I'm still waiting to be impressed by this show's quote, creativity, unquote. The only positive thing I could grab from this episode was the master prank caller was voiced by Tim Curry, who also played the lead hot dog in the previous episode. Wow, playing villains in this show must have been such a challenging role for him. 
The next episode was Skips vs. Technology. Wow, that's the most creative episode name I've seen of this show. Anyway, this episode begins with a montage with the Beach Boys' I Get Around and shows Skips throughout his whole life has been fixing things. However, Mordecai and Rigby are having computer problems and Skips can't fix it. So, Skips' old friend, Tecmo, decides to fix it for the boys while Skips tries to learn how computers work. However, a virus fuses with Tecmo and he starts to delete everything in the real world. Skips saves the day by smashing the computer. Do I even need to say it? I still hated this episode, but it was the one that I found the less painful to sit through because it focused on Skips. I swear, Mark Hamill can save anything for me. However, the plot still wasn't interesting, and the weirdness factor was still low. Finally, the last episode I watched was Butt Dial. Mordecai accidentally butt dials Margaret's cell phone and leaves an embarrassing message of him singing about her. He and Rigby then have to steal her cell phone and delete the message. They successfully do that, but they fail at typing the right password to access her phone, and they get sucked into it. These guys sure are good at getting sucked into things. Anyway, in the cell phone, there are old-fashioned answering machines. They end up getting out of the cell phone, and Margaret still hears the message. She ends up liking it. Oh, you know the drill. This episode was really dull. That's all I got. Well, now that I've watched 12 episodes of this show, I think that's good enough to actually have an opinion on this show. I'll start with the characters. I really don't like Mordecai and Rigby because they're so unlikable. When they're not backstabbing their friends and being complete jerks, they're being lazy and not doing their work. Plus, their characters have been done so many times before. Beavis and Butthead, Wayne and Garth from Wayne's World, Jay and Silent Bob, the list goes on. However, those characters were parodies of slackers. Mordecai and Rigby are just slackers that we're supposed to get behind? Sorry, it just doesn't work like that. Not to mention, they get really annoying really quickly. Oh! Oh! Yeah! Yeah! Chocolate cake! Mustache castache! Hmm! 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 hmm. Fist pump, dude, 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 shut up, shut up, shut up! My gosh, if it's one thing I didn't like about the '90s, it was the slang. Why must this show exploit that? Another thing I like to point out is the creator of the show. J.G. Quintel voices Mordecai. I don't mind voicing your own creations, but try not to sound like you're not putting any effort into it. For Pete's sakes, actually put on a cartoon voice instead of just sounding like yourself. Also, do I really need to talk about the supporting characters? Other than Skips, none of them seem to have any personalities, and that's just sad when you have characters that include a gumball machine, a lollipop, a fat guy, and a ghost. Another thing about this show is its format. For the first half of the show, it starts out boring, but then it throws a curveball and becomes weird and feels like a completely different show. It's like the animators are normal for the first half of production, but then they smoke a joint and finish the episode. Sorry, but that's just how it feels. Why can't it just stay weird for the whole show? Oh, that's right. That would be too difficult for this show's low budget. Speaking of the budget, this show, once again, has animation that looks like the doodles that I used to draw on my desk in third grade. I'll give this show credit. At least our characters actually have eyeballs for eyes instead of just dots. However, my overall problem with regular show is it's just so bland. The characters are bland, the plots are bland, even the episode's climaxes are bland. When watching this show, I just felt like I literally had nothing to say about it. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. I just, it just felt mediocre at best. It's sad because I was expecting a lot from this show because lots of people are riding my rear for not liking it. However, it just didn't impress me at all. And there's my final rant on regular show.
Bottom line, Adventure Time and regular show just aren't my ideas of good cartoons. They feel more like rejected music video ideas that ended up turning into cartoon shows. I'm glad to see that Cartoon Network is trying to experiment with these shows to try to cater a different type of crowd. However, I'm not a part of the crowd they're trying to cater to. If you are, good for you. I'm glad Cartoon Network is pleasing some people. Part of Mark Hamill fan club.